May 12th, 2020. So today's conversation, I want to, I've been hearing a lot of things on Twitter and from the EOS community in general. Um, there's been a growing sort of frustration, I would say, with Block One and um, pretty much the way that things are being handled as far as the EOS mainnet and the EOS IO software. While the sentiment is actually good, I would say absolutely in the EOS space, you know, people are excited. I can definitely say this is one of the most excited ecosystems when it comes to people rallying, people rallying around a vision towards the future um, versus just you know, playing gambling apps or stuff like that. A lot of people in the EOS ecosystem seem to be focused on, you know, how to get a billion users running on a platform, how to attract mainstream adoption, retail investment, things of that nature. But there's been a growing uh, frustration in the community when it comes to the way that the funds were raised. Um, I actually wasn't in the EOS ecosystem. I did not participate in the ICO at all. So I'm curious to hear from some of you guys in the EOS community who have been in here a little bit longer than me, how exactly it was if you participated in the ICO, allegedly, you know? <clears throat> because I know like, you know, people, I've heard people say before that there was pretty much no legal ties to block one at all you know the way they wrote um the introduction of the white paper there was no real legal ties to block one and block one although they were raising the money it was to build out from my understanding it was to build out eos io software <clears throat> but maybe somewhere that's getting lost in translation because a lot of people seem to believe that their main goal is to build out eos mainnet now, I'm not 100% sure, you know, exactly, again, why that comes from and where that comes from, but um, I think somewhere along the lines, it has got lost in translation. I see incredible amounts of value in the EOS mainnet. Um, personally, it's, you know, if you look at Blocktivity, it's number one. You know, it's got the most transactions running on it. It's got the most... You know developer support um, the most users but I'm also very bullish on a lot of the EOS IO projects like wax like Telos like boss um, and I truly do believe in the ability for EOS I've bought in completely on the vision for EOS IO to scale horizontally so I do think um, EOS mainnet will play a pivotal role as far as being a um, one of the primary layers for consensus um, I really don't know how all this maps out I'm curious to see you know how this maps out I personally think we're still very early so it's very hard to say exactly you know what is layer one what is layer two it's very hard to conceptualize like an OSI type of model for this for this crypto space because it is so so new still but if I had to guess, and I talked about this on my first podcast with Crypto Pickle, I would say that EOS Mainnet, along with um, several other popular EOS IO chains, will continue to do well into the future. Being that they are building user bases, being that they have liquidity built into them and they're gaining network effects, you know, the longer, since we haven't seen the sort of public awareness of EOS yet, you know, during the last bull run, it was mostly Bitcoin that was being talked about and Ethereum. You know, people were talking about BTC and talking about Ethereum, ETH. You didn't really hear much about anything else, like besides the occasional hit piece articles. But I remember specifically Floyd Mayweather was talking about he bought BTC and he bought ETH. And then I think he did his own little scam crypto coin or something like that. But you get my point. You know, Floyd Money Mayweather is, in my definition, mainstream. The epitome of mainstream. He is 
box office. He is as mainstream as it gets. And he was talking about BTC and ETH. This next bull run that we're about to get, that I, you know, not investment advice, but I strongly believe is approaching us very quickly, EOS will play a big role in it. And EOS is going to get, it's going to benefit massively. And we're going to be able to teach more people about blockchain, the benefits, and we're going to be able to, thanks to EOS, standardize a lot of the, um, you know, standardize the use of blockchain. Because that is, from what I can understand, Dan Larimer's ultimate goal is to eliminate the traditional database and replace it with the EOSIO software. And somewhere along the lines, you know, they will need to connect to a public ledger. And I would imagine, you know, EOS mainnet, because it is the most successful so far, um, as soon as, you know, we solve the issues that are plaguing the EOS network, completely solve it, make it easy, usable, similar to what Wax has with their Wax Cloud Wallet. Um, we need something like that for EOS mainnet. But solutions like that are already being built um, as we speak constantly. Um, DAP accounts, I know, is being created. That is being created off of the DAP network using liquid accounts. So that's going to mean free accounts for blockchain users. Anybody can interact with the blockchain, whether that be EOS, Mainnet, or another Wax, or Telos, or even Ethereum or Tron. You know, DAP accounts is working on being a universal blockchain um, interface interfacing wallet so that will make it much easier to mainstream this whole process so you know overall i don't know the future nobody does but just my two cents i think eos is here to stay <clears throat> i'm very bullish on a lot of the EOS IO software. There are plenty of them that are doing a lot of really good things, right? a lot of really big things. And, you know, blockchain is so big that there is truly a big enough pie for everybody to sort of get a piece. And I don't think it is a zero sum game. And, I, and actually, even if we're competing for, you know, let's say a consensus layer, you know, even though I don't think a DAP, if we need a high security DAP, has to gain consensus um, from simply one chain. It should be gaining consensus from multiple chains. So from that perspective, I don't think there should be this feudalism that people are starting to build. And, um, you know, as far as I know, because one other thing I have heard a lot is a lot of people are upset that voice has not been uploaded to the EOS mainnet and that's understandable but what I think people have to understand is that software is still in beta and as far as I know they have every plans to move that to EOS mainnet um, at least part of the DAP to EOS mainnet um, the parts that make sense and they're probably going to use voice as a proof of concept on how you can structure multi-chain dApps to work effectively and efficiently. You know, putting whatever you know you need to off onto a private chain, and then maybe putting um, some of whatever, whatever on the uh, mainnet. You know, boom, they're gonna show how that can be done. So, I think, um, you know, personally, I think EOS mainnet, uh, you know, certainly has a future. Um, I think all of EOS IO, I'm, I'm personally bullish in. Um, they, at the end of the day, EOS IO is leading the way in transaction speeds and throughput, and DPoS is great, you know. Um, experiencing DPoS is what people need to do before they make an uh, opinion about DPoS. Um, I personally, it took me a while to figure out the greatness of DPoS because I was looking at it from the outside. When you get into it and you experience it, it's a whole nother thing. You see how fast it is, you see how quick it is, and you know, it's it's secure. It's secure, you know? It, it's all about figuring out your use case and seeing how EOS can apply to you. So, um, 
that's it for this video uh like i said very bullish i want to know what you guys think though um eos versus esio that's the title of this video you know is there room for both do you guys feel like you know block one is not focusing enough of their time and effort into promoting eos mainnet how do you guys feel um please comment below let me know thanks guys